Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's Gofan Yolungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. This video is going to be in two parts, and today I'm, a, I'm reacting to question time for others. So, without wasting time, big shout out to the person that suggested this. Without wasting time, let's get into the video. I have a question about the. There is this question. Uh, there's a colleague. She works with me. She asked me, "Would non-Muslims they go to hell?" So, what's the definition of Islamic State? Is it because of the law, or is it because the majority of the people, the citizens, they are Muslims? In Islamic State, a Christian or a Jew, he want to marry according to his religion. This is allowed. He cannot marry like a man with a man. No, this is not allowed in Islam. What about like the dressing, this, like this hijab? You cannot like force it to the non muslims What about uh, what about the jizya for the non-Muslims? Them about that first. That's the okay. problem. I have a question about the. There is this question. Uh, there's a colleague. She works with me. She asked me, "Would non-Muslims they go to hell forever, or they have they go for?" Well, we, well, do you have knowledge? About that? First of all, we don't know who will and who will not go to hell. Uh -huh. So, if a person we're told doesn't receive the message, so they're living on some island somewhere. Mm -hmm. As long as they act according to their fitra then for them is paradise mm -hmm. let's check the they, maybe now. they never heard of, well, the jews the, the, the christians well the, the atheists today well the, the well the quran says yeah. even amongst the jews and the christians there are believers uh -huh. this is what the quran says yeah. so the people who followed musa alayhi salam uh, if they re led a good life they will go to jannah inshallah paradise even if they don't believe the prophet well this is the thing you see when you have received the message and if you believe it to be true, you are convinced, and then you reject it, then you're in deep, deep water. <laughs> because now you know that Allah has told you to do something, you accepted it, and now you deny it. Now you're in trouble. Now, how much you understood what your mental capacity was, uh, whether you believed it and accepted it, or whether you genuinely did not accept it because maybe the message was not given to you in a good way or in a correct way. This is for Allah to judge. Okay. So, um, but if uh, the word kufr means that you reject something after you are convinced of it being true. So you're, you have an open heart, you, you investigate it, but maybe the person who told you about Islam, they, meant, they said it to you in a very, very bad way. And you know, you were not convinced. There's a, different, there's a difference between these people and people who genuinely accept something and they deny it. Okay. But who, who will go to hell and who will not go to hell? This is up, this is up to Allah. Yeah, but Allah definitely, He tells us in the Quran, I think He gives us like... No, of course, but you see, what is in somebody's heart and what their connection to Allah, we can't see that. It's, it's, it, we, can, we can judge people because, oh, we can say, okay, this person is not Muslim. And oh, they have rejected, but maybe in their heart they've accepted it. Maybe they've uh, practiced a, 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 a you know, belief in some way. And Allah does say that uh, Allah will remove from punishment even the people with the atom's weight, a, a seed, a mustard seed of Iman. Allah will take them out of the punishment and they will get Jannah. And this verse is applied to who? Well, people who have even a mustard seed of Iman in their heart, a mustard seed of, of belief of Allah. Even so, like a like agnostic or theist? Well, again, again brother, you know, uh, first of all, I'm not a scholar. And I, I, I don't like to really enter into these discussions because it requires a, a deep amount of scholarship and knowledge and understanding. All I can say is, this is the message of Allah, this is the message of Islam, and Allah does say that there will be some people who will enter hellfire, the ones who reject. But we are told that, you know, I heard one scholar say that there will be a lot of non-Muslims who may have 
they may have an excuse on the day of judgment. Yeah. Because they will say everything we saw about this religion was negative, was bad. So we believed it to be bad, we believed it to be negative because of that. Okay. But maybe they still believe in a creator, maybe they still believe in God, maybe they still lead, lead a good life. But everything they heard, everything they saw, was negative. Mm -hmm. So they didn't accept the message. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Now Allah we know is Haq. Yeah. Allah will only deal with people with in just in a just way. Mm -hmm. And so inshallah Allah will be just with everybody. We know that. This is how Allah is. Allah is just. Mm -hmm. And so they will be dealt with in ju with justice. That's that's what we believe inshallah. Do you think that uh, that Okay, this is a separate question anyway. Do you think that, let's say that the Muslims one day, wherever in, in, this, in Europe or in our countries, they can rule according to the rules of God, according to the, the Sharia. Do you think that it will happen this or no? I don't believe that there's really anything in the Sharia, to be honest, that contradicts most of what people already accept and believe. I'll explain to you what I mean by that. Now, of course, when we talk about, you know, in the Sharia, a woman should dress in a certain way or a man should dress in a certain way. You know, uh, if you look at Islamic history, there were many centuries where uh, in Andalus and in Spain, there were many non-Muslims who didn't wear hijab. They didn't. They were not persecuted. You understand? So it's not like there was freedom. There was freedom. There was not this, uh, uh, you know, everybody walking around with a stick, forcing everybody to wear hijab, forcing it. In fact, we're told that in a in a, uh, in, a in a place where there are non-Muslims, according to their Sharia, if they drink alcohol, there's no punishment for them. Really? Uh, no, because it's not according to their Sharia. It's not haram to drink alcohol. So you can't enforce your Sharia on somebody else. Yeah, but if they live in a, like an Islamic state, if they're living in a Muslim country and they're not Muslim, then they can eat pork. They can drink alcohol. Really? Of course, you can't enforce, you cannot enforce them to conform to your religion of Islam. There's no so punishment this, uh, on them. So this punishment is for the Muslims actually. If you are Muslim, even the punishment is when you do these things publicly. If you do it secretly in your house, the Sharia police cannot come and investigate. Why are you growing so many grapes in your garden? Mm -hmm. You understand my point? Yeah. What you do in private is between you and Allah. But the enforcement for these things is when you do them publicly. Then it becomes a problem because it's seen as a corruption for society. But when you say, I'm sorry, I want to say, for example, in Islamic State. So what's the definition of Islamic State? Is it because of the law or is it because the majority of the people, the citizens, they are Muslims? How can we define Well, the, le the legal system for the Muslims of that land uh, are operated uh, by, by using the Quran and the example of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to govern. The government. The government, the, the rulership. But that does not mean that if you have a Christian living there and he wants to eat pork, that you make it haram for him and you enforce that he doesn't eat pork. If he drinks wine, according to his Sharia, he doesn't. He can drink wine. He had in public, for example. Well, listen, look. The thing is that, generally speaking, these things are tolerated when you do them. Uh, when you do them in the privacy of your home and of course there will still be the law that you can't drink and drive because now your freedom is affecting other people around you because if you drink and drive you may have an accident you may hurt people right so now when you do that in the public arena it has an effect on other people around you so there will be restrictions for that of course but what you do privately you want to go to church you want to but it is true that the propagation of religion where you take people into disbelief start worshiping idols uh, this is not allowed okay so in saudi arabia 
you cannot go or in Muslim countries you cannot go and start encouraging people to worship idols this is not permitted you understand so there are certain uh, rules and regular but if in private you want to go to your temple and you want to worship idols the, the Muslim government cannot come and destroy the temple okay they cannot come and destroy the church this is not acceptable in Islam so you know it, what we see today you know if you look at Umar Khattab anhu, from we, we learn that he had treaties with non-muslims even with the uh, Zoroastrians the fire worshippers there were treaties you can enter into treaties have peace between you they were not forced to accept Islam so if, for example let's say uh, in Islamic State a Christian or a Jew they want to marry according to his religion this is allowed I mean, yeah, of course they will allow it. Oh, well, of if, course. for example an atheist he lives in Islamic State and he want to marry four wives is this allowed they allow him to have four wives uh, well because look according to his Sharia it, it, it's not disallowed yeah so he can marry ten for if he wants to marry ten it's nothing to do with the it's nothing to do with the it, it, his Sharia is, is different so he can do whatever he likes according to his Sharia but of course there are certain restrictions so for example uh, uh, he cannot marry a Muslim woman uh -huh. because under Islam she has protection if she marries a non-Muslim then there's no protection for her and he cannot marry like a man with a man no this is not allowed in Islam Ma marriage is between a man and a woman in Islam there is no nikah there's no marriage between so a man even, and a man if, like these two atheists they live in an Islamic state and let's say they're both of them males they want to engage marriage in the Islamic state they them no of course no, no, no. of course because this is look every country has its moral uh, uh, norms every country so if two men are living together the Islamic State cannot ask them are you guys homosexual <laughs> Islamic the Islamic rulership cannot question their relationship what they do in private it is between them and Allah but if you now make something public even a man and a woman acting in a physical way acting in a physical way in public this is not permitted in Islam because the more because, because the morality of uh, Islamic rulership is that these things are not permitted publicly so you can't just suddenly go and start kissing a woman on the street because this is not seen as uh, morally acceptable okay uh, if a two men are together they're living together the Islam, Islam cannot people cannot uh, go and investigate why are these two men living together you understand this is this is private between them and Allah but if you bring something in the public domain whether you're a man or and a woman or a man and a man this is not acceptable in the public domain because this is our morality this is our sense of decency and this is for the society around you not to be affected by your freedoms your freedoms are your freedoms private to you you cannot now make other people have to witness what you're doing possibly children or whatever and and force them to have to partake in that uh, into in, into that sort of public uh, arena so it's very accommodating <coughs> it is a uh, very much accommodating in fact when we look at centuries of Islamic rule there were many religions living there and they were living in peace and when the for example in Spain when the Crusaders went in to Spain to overthrow the Muslim Empire in Spain many Christians yeah. and Jews they left with the Muslims to yeah. settle in North Africa why because they like it because they knew they had freedom under under the Muslim rulership now I'm not saying all of the rulers in history were good people of course they were not but this shows 
tells you the main principle of Islam that we don't force ourselves. They, Allah says in the Quran, there's no compulsion in religion. You can't force somebody to accept Islam. No, this one I know. When it comes to the rules, for example, let's say you are in Islamic State, the majority of people that are Muslims and the, the, the law of the, of the state, it comes from the Quran and the Hadith and the Sirah. There is certain things which you explain to me. What about like the dressing, is like this hijab? You cannot like force it to the non no. Muslims because they. But there is in, in Muslim countries, they still have some basic rules. In other words, you can't dress in a mini skirt and walk on the streets on a mini skirt. Why? Because your freedom now is infringing on other people's freedom. Yeah. Right? Because if I don't want to see that, why are you forcing that upon me to see that? You could argue, well, you can look away. Yeah. Okay, but a 13 year old boy is not going to look away. <laughs> We've all been 13. Yeah. You understand? Very interesting video. Um, I love what the conversation is all about, and he's, ask, he's actually asking some good questions. Because when you go to these countries where the um, Sharia law is practiced, what visitors don't know what visiting visitors don't know is that there are certain rules that will actually apply to them i remember some years back i was re reading some newspaper i don't know if it was for class or I was just looking at the news but then um it's like there's this couple that went there i think the guy went there to work or something and the other woman was just his girlfriend when she got pregnant there was a possible it's like they f when they found out she was pregnant there was a possibility that should have to go to jail because to jail because they were not married another thing is um when you're going to these countries like i said as much as you have freedom as much as you you are free in this world when you go to these countries that practice this law there are certain things that are going to apply to you as well like he said wearing a short skirt in public but i've seen people go to dubai and uh, in short stuff so does it only apply to certain places that you're going to or what because I'm confused otherwise let's get into the second part of this